like readers and not see what it says really or, or we not get the message and the, what what the principle is and he says open my eyes that I might see your word but then he goes on to say in verse 36 turn my heart toward your statues not toward selfish game turn my eyes away from worthless things preserve my life according to your word turn my eyes away from worthless things because there are things in this world that may seemingly have worth, but in the kingdom of God, they really don't have worth. And he says, let me begin to see what truly has worth in your eyes. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Verse 59. I've considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I mean, this is, you know, this is one of those really introspective, say, okay, I've thought about me, I've thought about you, your ways are better. <laughs> I mean, if we ever reach that point where, you know, <laughs> good move, you know, like, <laughs> okay, this is what I think, this is how I operate, these are my ways, and I see that you think a little differently <laughs> and your ways are a little differently and I'm going to weigh the two and I say, hmm, your ways are better. Amen. The book of Isaiah even says that his thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways, higher than the heavens. But the good news is he gives us his thoughts and he gives us his ways so we can learn his thoughts and learn his ways and turn towards his thoughts and towards his ways. Verse 105, this is a, a verse that we all know. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light for my path. Sometimes, you know, we don't know which way to turn. Yogi Berra said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> and have you ever heard that, you know? <laughs> but sometimes, you know, we don't know what direction to take. We don't know to go to the right, to go to the left, and God's word will give us some guidance into this is better than that. Verse 130, and I love this concept, the unfolding of your words gives light, gives understanding to the simple. It's almost like if I take this paper and I fold it up. And the Bible is like this in some ways sometimes. You now we look at it and we say, hmm. But then all of a sudden it just begins to, oh, I see that. And like the light bulb goes on about this verse or this passage. I mean, how many times have we had these experiences where, you know, we look at this and we go, wow, now I see. Or sometimes we'll look and say, I never saw that in there before. <laughs> and one of the funny things, and I don't know if any of you or others are willing to admit this, but, you know, I'll find a passage in here and I'll say, wow, you know, this, oh, I see that. And then it's underlined. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it before, but I didn't get it, you know. <laughs> Psalm 141, verse 8. Psalm 141, verse 8. <clears throat> and this is the same as we talked recently about Second Chronicles 20, about the story of Jehoshaphat. He wakes up one morning, he's surrounded by this vast army. He knows not what to do. And he resolves to inquire the Lord, and then he begins to pray, and he says, Lord, I don't know what to do. And we find ourselves in that same situation at times. Lord, I don't know what to do. But then he then says, but my eyes are on you. I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Like the song that we sang, Oceans, that we, the waves will rise at times. We have to keep our eyes above the waves on God. And here it's phrased in a different way. 
Psalm 141, verse 8, But my eyes are fixed on you, O sovereign Lord, and you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. The key word there is not my eyes are on you, but my eyes are fixed on you. Because, you know, we can like, okay, well, I'll take a glance at the word and, you know, and I'll just kind of briefly come into prayer and then, you know, then I'm distracted and everything and our eyes come off of God onto the waves, onto the circumstances. But he says, my eyes are fixed on you. Amen. And if we can keep our eyes fixed on God, we won't be tossed to and fro by the waves. We won't be, fear won't grip us and hold us. Doubts won't creep in and just stay there. But if our eyes are fixed on God, and that comes, we need to do that. John chapter 3 verse 1. All this is pre John chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, well, I, I told the story of Jehoshaphat, and you can look at that. Um, uh, we're not going to turn there and go through the whole thing. But John chapter 3, verse 1. All of what I'm talking about this morning is predicated upon getting to first base in the kingdom. You know, it's like Monopoly. In order to get to Boardwalk, <laughs> remember Monopoly? Sure. You got to go, you know, the first steps over on the left side of the board, and then you got to go around and all that before you get to the real prizes over here. But all of this that we're talking about, our eyes fixed on God and, and our eyes just trusting Him above the ways, is predicated upon one thing. You got to get in the kingdom. It doesn't work if you're not in the kingdom. The story of Nicodemus and Jesus talks about this. It said, John chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council, came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know your teacher has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. Jesus, in reply, declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. You can't even see that there's a kingdom of God unless you're born again. Unless we have a spiritual birth, unless we receive Jesus into our lives, into our hearts. We receive Jesus going to the cross for us, paying the price for our sins, washed clean of our sins, and then he comes into us, the Spirit of God comes inside of us, and then all of a sudden our blind eyes are open and we can see the reality of the kingdom of God and the reality of God on the throne of our lives and we can see this kingdom which is different than the kingdom of the world. But we can't see that unless we're born again, born from above, born of God. And then he says, how can a man be born again? He's, you know, this is the natural man thinking when he's old, surely can enter a second time into his mother's womb be born. Then Jesus even says something even more perceptive about this. He says, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and the spirit. You can't even see, let alone enter and be part of, unless you're born again. Which is so simple. It is so simple. Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood, died for us, paid the price for our sins. God is holy. God cannot look upon sin. God wants fellowship with us, but because he can't look upon sin, he did something about that to reconcile us to him. Jesus came to atone for our sins, and all we have to do it's so simple. All we have to do is receive it. But it has to be received. And then all of a sudden, we can see the kingdom. I remember 
this goes back to 1985 when I got born again. Prior to that, I did not know there was an Old and New Testament. I did, had no idea who Jesus was. And someone gave me a Bible right after I was born again. And I looked at the Bible and it just made sense. Why? Because the author of the Bible, the Spirit of God, who the one who prompted the authors of all these books, was living inside of me. And I said, wow, this is good. Wow, that's good stuff. And it just made sense immediately. Like, wow. Being welcomed into the kingdom of God. Jesus goes on further about this. John chapter 12, verse 42. <clears throat> John chapter 12, verse 44, excuse me. Jesus cried out, When a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. You want to see God? Look at Jesus. You want to see the nature of God? Look at Jesus. I've come into the world as a light, so no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. You know, now we come out of the darkness where we couldn't see, certainly couldn't see the kingdom of God, certainly couldn't see with spiritual eyes, certainly couldn't see God in his majesty. But he says now, you're no longer in the dark. But you can see the one who sent me. And then John chapter 8 verse 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. All of a sudden we are in the light. We can see where we're going. We can see who God is. We can see who Jesus is. And we're no longer walking in the dark. You know, <clears throat> I was in the dark, didn't even know I was in the dark. <laughs> People are in the dark, don't even know they're in the dark. <laughs> and if you shine the light, the brightest light in the world, in front of someone who is blind, they can't see it. And you wonder sometimes, well, how come they can't see? Well, it's because they're blind. But I was there. I know it. I've been there. I couldn't see. And just by the mercy of God, the veil was lifted. And I began to see the kingdom. I want to take this one step further. And we're going to close with this. Ephesians 1, verse 16. Now, <clears throat> one step further. Just to summarize on this, God sees everything. God's watching everything. He knows everything. He knows everything about our lives. He knows what's happening in the world. He also is attentive to how we see and what we're looking at and what we're uh, watching, etc., etc. And for us to see the kingdom, we must be born again. But then now that we're in the kingdom, it's just the beginning. Now he says... This is what I want for those of you who are in the kingdom. And Paul has some really profound prayers for believers. If you look at his epistles, extremely profound intercessory prayers for believers. And this is one of them, to the church, to the believers in Ephesus. He says to them, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Gorgeous Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better. Now watch this next verse. I pray also that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and the saints, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. So he's saying, okay, I'm glad you're in the kingdom. 
But now, get deeper. I want you to have some real understanding of what the kingdom is all about. And he says, I keep praying for you and I ask God, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better. So, first of all, he wants us to know Christ better. He wants to know God better. We're in the kingdom. Fine, well, and good. Now, let's get into a deep relationship. And then he says, I pray also the eyes of your heart, not just the superficial what we see, but from the inside, I want you on the inside to get this. I want you to know within you, in the deepest part of who we are, that you may know the hope to which you've been called the riches of your inheritance and the incomparable great power for us who believe. I want you to have a grasp of how immense this kingdom and walking with God is or can be. You're in the kingdom. God bless those who are in the kingdom. Now, come and wade in the water. <laughs> As the song says, come and get to know me deeply, personally, intimately. I want you to know the riches of your inheritance. I want you to know the power that's available now that you're in the kingdom. And I want you to know in your heart all of this. Not just in your mind. Not just reading the words. But I want you in, I want this to become who you are. I want the eyes of your heart to have this understanding. And you go, wow. This is not a matter of, okay, I'm saved. I'm saved from the dominion of darkness. Praise God. Washed clean of my sins. But now he says, come. Don't just be part of the multitudes. Don't even be just the 70 working for me, ministering for me. I want you even more than the 12 just learning the precepts. I want you to be like the three. I want you to experience the intimacy and the power of what it's like being close to me. Yes. Say, wow, this is good. Yes, it is. Now, I'm going to close this by making this personal for each of us. We're going to take this passage and we're going to rephrase it. We're not changing the words of the Bible, but we're just going to personalize it and if you would like this prayer, then I would ask you to, I'm going to rephrase this and just repeat after me. Start in verse 17. I keep asking, just after I, just if you want to say this, just say it after I say it. I keep asking, I keep asking that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ the glorious, my glorious Father, my glorious Father may, give me may give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, spirit of wisdom and revelation. So, I may know him better. so I may know him better. I pray also the eyes of my heart may be enlightened in order that I may know the hope to which I've been called, the riches of my glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparable great power for me who believes. And if you said that this morning, get ready. If you said that earnestly this morning, and just get ready for him. It says he's watching over his word to fulfill it. Jeremiah. It also says his word doesn't return void. 
So he's going to do what his word says. He's a doer of his word. <laughs> you know? So just be open, be expectant, and let's just watch him just work in our lives. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for the wonders of Jesus. Thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you that you are watching. You see everything in our lives. You know everything about us. And Lord, we just lift our eyes to you. We keep our eyes fixed on you. And we thank you in advance for watching over this passage in Ephesians to bring it to pass in each of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching our Sunday message. I'm Pastor Dwight Stevens, the founder of the Paramount Church. We invite you to join us for our Sunday worship services at 10.30 a.m. in the historic landmark Paramount Theater building at 139 North County Road in Palm Beach, where the gospel of Jesus Christ is paramount. <laughs>